Welcome, my dear viewers, to another Noah Show video. Our story begins 141 years ago in Germany on March 22nd, 1881. A boy by the name of Hans Wilsdorf was born. Hans' parents owned a iron shop in Germany, a very small one. He had two siblings, a brother and a sister, both younger than him. Sadly, at the age of 12, his parents passed away. His mom on March 27th, 1892, and his father October 16th, 1893. Since Hans and his siblings were still young, so they needed someone to take care of them. So Hans' aunt and uncle stepped in to help them. The way that they helped them was that they sold the iron shop and got the money from that and sent them to boarding school. For Hans, this experience was very dreadful and he was very unhappy. He just focused on surviving by doing his homework or schoolwork. But hold on a minute. Isn't everything they give you schoolwork because you live at the school? That's what a boarding school is. I don't know, but it's considered schoolwork, but homework at the same time. When he did graduate in 1900, he moved to a city called Les Champs de France, or I put it right here because as I said, I'm not too good with these city names, but the city was in Switzerland. When he did move there, he worked for a watch company called Kuno Corten. Kuno Corten is a company that exported Swiss made watches worldwide. The reason why he got hired for this job is because he could read and write in English. They needed this because they have a lot of customers from America and the British Empire. So the dreadful years in boarding school was actually good for him. Three years later, he moved to London and worked at a watchmaking company. Working in these different companies, he got fascinated with watchmaking, with the mechanics of watches. He just got fascinated with watches itself. But he had an idea. He wanted wristwatches to be more popular. He wanted them to be worn wherever you go. For that reason, he created a watch company called Wizzledorf and Davis. You might be asking yourself, who's Davis? Well, the answer to your question is Davis was his brother-in-law and that's it. Hans wanted to distribute quality timepieces at an affordable price. That was his goal with this company. To accomplish his goal, he convinced a small movement manufacturer to produce a small enough movement to fit on your wrist. You're probably watching the video and asking yourself, well, the name is not Rolex. Why did you put Rolex in the title? Well, the answer to your question is at the time that he made the company, the name wasn't Rolex. The name Rolex actually came up to him randomly. No, no, I mean randomly. You see, one day he was in a carriage in London and he heard the name in his ear, Rolex. And he said, oh, that's a neat name. I'm going to take it and I'm going to use it for my watch company. And the rest is history. Now you know where the name Rolex came from and you understand that I am not a clickbaiter. What I tell you in the title is what's going to happen in the video for the most part. Then in 1910, Rolex got the certification of chronometric precision awarded by the official watch rating center in Bien, the very first in the world wristwatch to get this certification. It was a spectacular day for Rolex. Then four years later in the Q Observatory in Great Britain gave Rolex a class A certification, the very first for a wristwatch. That same year, World War One happened. Great luck, what can I say? No, because he was German living in London during the World War One time, he felt very threatened. So he moved the Rolex headquarters to Geneva, Switzerland. That wasn't really the reason, that was just kind of like the cover up story, but most likely it was because of the 19th 1915 tax was 33% on customers duty and that was just too much for them. So far Rolex was just Rolex. They are missing one key part of Rolex and that part was the crown, the five point crown. That is until 1925 whenever they trademarked the five point crown, the most iconic logo in the world, in my opinion course. Right now, everything is in place for Rolex to become Rolex, except for the watches. Like there wasn't any like big watches at that time. That is until 1926 when Rolex unveiled the Oyster wristwatch. Now you might be asking, what is the Oyster wristwatch? And I have the answers. The Oyster wristwatch was the very first wristwatch that is fully waterproof to a certain degree and fully dustproof to a certain degree. All right, so they made the unbelievable watch believable, but not really believable because no one believed them. How are they going to make it believable for the people? To make the unbelievable believable, they got the help of a young lady, Mercedes Jets. Now you might be asking yourself, who is she and why is she even in the story? Well, the answer to your question is, she was trying to cross the English Canal in one 
go. She would be the first lady to do so. So Rolex used that opportunity to show their oyster watch. And how did they show that you might ask? Hans went out publicly and said she will be wearing our oyster watch and when she emerges from the water the watch will be perfectly on time. If this worked everyone would change their point of view on Rolex because it's never been done before. When Miss Jets emerged from the water everyone was rushing to check on her but also to check on the watch and to everyone surprise the watch was perfectly in time it's been 15 hours underwater and it's perfectly in time this was unbelievable they made the unbelievable believable the sales just went through the roof tell them to bring me my money yeah! fast forward to 1931 rolex makes the perpetual oyster wristwatch now you might be asking what's the perpetual oyster wristwatch it is the first rolex that is self winding. You might also be asking yourself, what's a self-winding watch? And if you watched my past Patek Philippe video, you would understand that I talked about self-winding watches in that video. So after you're done with this video, go back to the other video and watch that. But you don't have to if you don't want to. So I'll just give you a brief explanation. To understand what a self-winding watch is, we need to understand what a watch is. This was a mechanical watch. That means it needs to be wound to for the gears to work. And a self-winding watch is where the gears work because of kinetic energy by you doing this you have a rotor in the bottom of the watch movement that spins and winds the watch to understand more you can watch my past video now fast forward eight years to the year 1839 and world war ii begins while every other watch brand was suffering rolex found a way to increase their moral acceptance and their reputation how did they do this you might ask well rolex offered the british and american pow's a buy now and pay later option what is a pow you might ask well a pow is a prisoner of war right now you're probably thinking this is not profitable for them why would they ever do this well they were trying to improve their moral acceptance and they were trying to improve their reputation around the world in 1945 world war ii ended and rolex celebrated their 40th anniversary how did they celebrate you might ask well they released the date just. The date just is not like the day dates. The date just is just the date. And so it's date just. It's a good naming system. Then eight years later, Rolex created the Oyster Perpetual Explorer, or now known as the Explorer. Rolex made this so they can conquer the ground and also the sky. You see, whenever someone like me and you walking on the ground, we would get a Rolex. And if you wanted to go to Mount Everest, you would get the Explorer. They conquered the ground to the sky, but not the water. That is until that very year, 1953, Rolex made the Rolex Submariner. The most iconic and well-known Rolex watch in the world that can go down 330 feet or 100 meters. And so in one year, they conquered the ground to the sky and from the sky to the water. When I say sky, I don't really mean sky because you see, they didn't really conquer the sky. That is until 1955 when they made the GMT Master. What even is the GMT Master, you might ask? Well, it was the Greenwich Mean Time Zone or the globalized time zone at that time. Remember when I was talking about the date just and I said day date? At that time, the day date wasn't actually made. It wasn't until 1956 when they made the day date. And now you have the day just and the day date. At the time, they had men's day just and day dates, but no women's one. If the women wanted to wear one, it would be very bold. So in 1957, they made the lady day just. Sadly, three years later, Hans Wolfsdorf passed away. He might be gone, but the mark that he left, no one can erase. Then three years later, 1963 the iconic cosmograph daytona was made it was made for endurance racing because one it had a chronograph and two it had a tachometer on the bezel and it would tell you the miles per hour of your car it's not like you need to do or something and it was waterproof it had it all it literally had it all do you remember the submariner that i was talking about well actually in 1967 they made the sea dweller now you might be asking yourself well what's the sea dweller if they already have something that goes underwater why do you need two well that one went down 100 meters. The sea dweller goes down 610 meters. Exactly 2,165.35 feet. That's deep. 
very deep. While we are remembering things, do you remember the Explorer that I told you about in 1953? Well, in 1971, they actually made the Explorer 2. Why did they make the Explorer 2? They already had the Explorer. Well, the Explorer 2 is meant for people that goes into caves and explores down under, not in the water. Because when you're down under, you don't really know what time you're at or if you're day or night. So they implemented a 24 hour time on the bezel with the hour hand that tells you what hour you're at, if you're day or night. And this helped a lot for people that goes into caves. Since we're speaking of exploring, you should explore the past no issue of videos and the new ones and start your exploration by subbing to the channel. Now I will explore myself to the kitchen to get me some food. And so I'll have to leave you here and say my goodbyes. Peace.